Welcome to Risk Forever channel guys. To the channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. In one of my last videos I asked you which map do you want to see next. The most requested were two different maps, Central America and Mall of the Dead. Both of them were suggested twice. So since there was a tie between the maps, I decided to count total likes on the comments of these requested maps. And after combining total likes, the winning map became Central America 1. So here we are, today we are playing 4 player fixed card game on Central America map. Settings, Alliance is on. Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. The game mode is 70% domination. This time I'm playing against two beginner rank players who are yellow and green. And one intermediate rank player who is blue. It can be a struggle to hold the continent when you play with low rank players, a lot of them tend to be aggressive and attack any continent they have borders with. So sometimes it can be a real struggle. And in this game I'm definitely planning to get a continent, well I mean a region, not a continent low. So anyways, wish me best of luck as always guys, I will definitely need it. Keep your fingers crossed for me and hope that the luck will be on my side today. For those who don't know what 70% domination game mode is, let me explain the rules right quick. In 70% domination the main goal is to control 70% territories of the map, the first person who manages to do that, wins the game. You don't need to hold them for at least one turn, as at the time you capture the last territory to control 70% of the map, you straightly win the game. Even if all or some of the players are still alive. Central America map has 61 territories in total, so in order to win, you need to capture 43 territories. If you want to know how many territories of the certain map make 70%, then you need the total amount of territories multiply by 70, and then the result divide by 100. The result of that division will be a number of the territories you need to capture. So if we take Central America for example, then we 61 multiply by 70, and get 4270 as the product. Then 4270 we divide by 100, and get 42.7 as the quotient. Meaning that we need to capture 43 territories in total. The first most important thing when you play 70% domination game mode is to make alliances with all of the players, so they will let you hold the continent. Or even a few of them. As you saw, in the beginning of the game I sent an alliance request to all of the players. The blue player was the only player who accepted it, but actually other players act kinda like an allies as well. As they don't attack into my regions as well. I mean it doesn't really matter to me whether they allied with me or not, as long as they don't invade my regions. When you play with smart players, alliances basically don't mean anything, as everyone will be doing whatever what is the best for the game. And okay, the yellow player isn't being neutral as I thought he would be. Well, at least he invaded the blue player as well. The yellow player doesn't want that I along with the blue player wouldn't become too strong. Not sure if it was the best decision ever to invade us, because he just makes enemies for himself. While two other players are strong and gets around equal amount of troops, then it's the best to let them deal with each other by themselves, rather than starting to fight both of them alone. By fighting both of them, you will just become weaker and weaker, while they will probably be as strong as they were. It isn't really worth fighting on two fronts, as it's like a Sisyphean task. Pointless, unrewarding and fruitless task which must be repeated over and over again. But differently than a Sisyphean task, it isn't going to become endless, as by getting weaker and weaker every turn, eventually you will be taken out. It's only good to fight on two fronts when you're strong enough to afford it, or when you're playing with the really dumb players who you know you can beat easily. Well, actually the yellow player isn't really fighting on two fronts. He just invaded regions which I and blue player didn't guard. So nobody has really fought and nobody has really wasted their troops. But the fact that he is making enemies when it's not really needed is real. 
rather than invading our regions he could just basically capture a second region by himself as well. And be as strong as we are. I don't know how about the blue player, but I wouldn't attack the yellow player if he had captured a second region, I even sent an alliance request to him which he didn't accept. In overall I want to be a friend with everyone and avoid any conflicts as much as possible. As remember guys, in order to win at 70% domination game, you don't need to take any of the players out, all what you need to do is to capture 70% of territories, as after you do that, you straightly win the game. A good strategy in 70% domination can be to build your troops into one or a few big armies and go at full power capturing 70% of territories in a single turn. So this is why it is so important to have alliances with the other players. As in order to have a few big armies, probably you will need to leave some of your borders unguarded. And when you allied with others, they will leave your continent untouched, even though they could invade it easily. Well, even if you don't have alliances with others, sometimes your big armies can discourage other players of invading your continent as they know that if you get mad, then these armies can be used to crush them. Also when you have some big armies then obviously don't keep them in a blocked place, as how you will go at full power capturing 70% of territories when all of your armies are blocked, la la la. So always make sure to have them in a position in which you would be able to capture a lot of territories. And lol guys, the green player after so many turns of waiting finally captured a region. Probably he could have done that quite earlier, as now he isn't that strong comparing to other players. I'm not sure how about the blue player, but I wouldn't have attacked the green player. I even sent an alliance request to him back then which he didn't accept. My strategy in this game is to be a friend with everyone, or actually not to be an enemy of anyone would be a better term. I want to get strong building my troops into a few big armies and then going at full power when I see I'll be able to do that. So in order to grow strong, I need to avoid any of the conflicts if possible, I don't want to waste any of the troops attacking other players as I will need them a lot capturing 70% of the territories in a single turn. Also if I fight with anyone, then other player or players who don't fight, can become quite stronger than us so we will have a huge disadvantage against them, and if we fight a lot, destroying ourselves way too much then it can become very easy for someone to capture 70% of the territories in a single turn. And so far I'm really happy with my situation guys. I'm so glad that they let me hold even 3 regions, I really thought that somebody of them was definitely going to invade. But I'm so happy I was wrong. It was worth a try capturing a third region and I succeeded. I guess that players are really afraid of my big armies and wouldn't like to mess with me at all. The yellow player even finally accepted my alliance request after seeing how strong I became, la la la. He wouldn't like to start a conflict with me at all. And look guys, my armies are so good positioned to go capturing 70% of territories in a single turn. As you can see I set them in the way in which I would be able to go in three different directions. I really see an opportunity to go at full power anytime soon. I just want to get even more stronger before doing that. Well, some of you might say that my 44 troops army just became blocked right now, but don't worry guys, actually that army in Florida territory is connected with the border of the blue player, with his 7 troops so I will still be able to use that army when it will become needed. The only problem for me would be is only if the blue player would start building on that border a big army, but I doubt he will, we are the allies whatsoever. I think he mostly afraid of getting invaded by the yellow player, as he keep building his armies big next to yellow's 18 troops over here. The yellow's decision of being aggressive in the beginning of the game, quite backfired him, as currently it can be quite impossible for him getting 70% of territories in a single turn, as he is not only blocked of going in a top side of the map by my armies, but by the blue player armies as well. Also I'm not even mentioning how weak the yellow player is by only having one region, along with the green player who only has one region as well, which he delayed to capture for so many turns. The blue player is quite stronger than them, but still not as strong as me. Plus he puts most of the troops only in one place of the map, over here to be exactly. 
so he is not really set up to go at full power capturing 70% of the map as well. So the odds of me winning this game are currently so high I would say. Nobody of the players have such a good position as me. And I have a very sneaky plan guys, which is not really sneaky at all, but is really sneaky indeed. You probably noticed that the green player disconnected. I just checked a few times to be sure he didn't come back to the game. So I knew that the bot is going to attack and invade my regions as they aren't guarded at all, so in order to prevent that, I needed to start swiping him out of his region, or out of the place which borders with me if we say in other words. I didn't want to start losing an advantage. Also I know that some of the players disconnect for a few or multiple turns and then suddenly come back to the game. And since nobody pays attention to the bots, they gain some or a lot of the advantage. For example if I hadn't swiped the green bot from his continent out, then he would have been invading mine and blue players continents getting more and more of the territories, and then if he had come back to the game, he probably wouldn't have had much of the struggle to finish capturing 70% territories of the map, as since you know, real players don't really pay attention to the bots as it's so easy to beat them after you defeat all of your real opponents. So by swiping the green player out from his region, I just prevented the way of this scenario possibly happening. Usually it's a bad idea to attack the computer players, but sometimes there are some exceptions as you can see as well. I feel I did very well by swiping the green player out from his region, even though it probably was risky. Since there are possibility that blue and yellow players can team up with each other to attack me, but if they aren't going to, then I will quickly regain the troops I lost and continue dominating the game. So let's see how it goes guys. And oh no, the blue player has just broken his alliance with me. I didn't see that coming. I was really thinking to finish capturing 70% of the territories in the next turn, but if the blue player actually gonna attack me capturing a lot of my territories, then probably I won't be able to. As you probably remember that it is 60 seconds per turn game. And I know that I can only capture 20 territories in a turn, while in order to win on this map, I will need to have even 43 of them. And wait guys, the blue player actually became the bot. So that's why our alliance has been broken. So since the bot won't take a lot of territories of mine, does that mean that I will still be able to finish capturing 43 territories? Wow, the bot just fortified his biggest army next to my border to block one of my armies, just wow. So I'm not sure if I will be able to. Well, obviously I could, having 28 territories in total, I only needed to capture 15 more. But as you can see I missed that opportunity. So will it cost me the game guys, let's see. Well, I know for the fact that the yellow player having only 14 territories in total will not be able to capture 29 territories more to make 43. All what he can do is to attack me. But since he sent me thumbs up after I attacked the blue player for a little bit, and since he sent a thumbs up again after I sent him an attack request to attack blue, I'm actually thinking that he is going to attack the blue bot for real, la la la. And lol, he is attacking the blue bot for real, that is so good for me guys. Lol, he took our alliance way too seriously for real, la la la. And lol guys, did you see when the green player suddenly came back to the game? I totally saw that coming. So I feel so good that I didn't let his bot to grow strong. I know that some of the players use this sneaky tactic to disconnect for some turn hoping that enemies destroy each other while their bot becomes strong. Well, maybe the green player had some internet connection issues for real. Who knows. In any case it must be bizarre when after reconnecting to find yourself with a small army just to be taken out by another bot in the following turn, la la la. And now it is my time to shine guys, show time. Now nobody is stopping me from winning. Since the yellow player was a really good ally, I decided to start capturing blue bot's territories firstly. To show some appreciation to him for staying in the game, rather than disconnecting in the middle of the game like two other players did.